start and then I choose a five because of the shape of the area you get. It looks kind of portrait. So I believe portrait should be the best. In such a case, I will not use landscape. You get a point now. And obviously, I know that you know how to draw, to do the drawing, right? You come down to map frame and then you find that particular data frame. For this particular one, let me let me choose this. Then I'm just gonna draw it to it. So just like every other map. So I try to expand this and create a section for, for grids. So jack this up and make it more kind of big to make life easy. You have the grids here. The lower the number, the bigger it is. So we have 1,200 here, 1,200,000 here. <laughs> Let's just make it 900, 900,000. 900, so it should be big. So I just come here and put nine and press enter. So you see it's bigger. It's not still enough. Then let's go to seven. Then click enter. It's more bigger. So you cannot come here and just say eight then and click enter. Can you see? Which is very good. It covers enough. I can then come here and go to activate. Activate give me room to drag to the center and just bring it like this. Because I would like to place my legend here. If I replace it here, and place my legend here, it will be okay. So you, you structure the places you put your element based on, based on the, what they call it, based on the shape of the area. So in that regard. So remember that I activated this to move, then I can just cancel and say, okay, fine, go back to layout. So it's back to layout now. So if I want to move again, I come down to layout and select activate and drag it, right? Very good. So I'll go back again. So now the next thing I want now is my legend. So legend. Another thing I want you to put, you know, to adhere to, to make sure that you, you don't forget is legend. So you see now, see my legend now. My legend covered a lot of stuff because in this particular map section, there are so many layers there. How do I control this in LGIS Pro? See this place here? Everything I create, they are here. You get the point now, you see? The... Everything here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Area boundary, you know, which is white, the elevation. You see the E shade, which makes it to look like this. They are hot here. So, but the most important thing I did here is my legend. So I have here a legend. You see, you can drop this down. Click on it, it's dropped down. So let me remove the unnecessary, unnecessary. I remove this. You can watch as it changes. I remove this. I remove this. I remove this. The only thing that I need here is the elevation, isn't it? Now, looking at this one now, so that means I've got it, I've got rid of other ones, then I can just bring it back like this. So now, look at this now, it's not big, isn't it? It's very small. What do I do? I select on it and I come down to elements. You see, element is somewhere there. You get the point now? If it's for your own case, if you cannot find it, you can just right click on it and click on property. You get so is to show me this place still element it's just pop it up here so this is active right element on this element this arrow is very important it helps you you see this drop down here click on it and then you can change many things group layer name layer name you see layer name is the name of the layer so this one now is layer name elevation isn't it layer name let me click it and say okay fine i want to change the property of the layer name property very most important you, you break this down, you choose appearance, very essential. Yeah. You expand this to make it more audible. Then you can come here and click on both. So it will, and if you click on apply, you see, it change the layer name elevation to make it more bold. So you might want to change this to below these meters or probably you know, do some things there, but you don't know how to do it. What do you do? You still click this, you return this back the same way, you drop down this arrow here, in this case, not layer name, it is what the head is. You get the point now. So you can come here to head is, click on appearance, yeah, and come here and bold and make it, you know, probably 10. And let's see what happened there in that regard. So you see now it's more smaller. So I'm just going to come here and make it like 14 to just a scenario. So it's a meter, right? Apparently. 
this section you might like to change it so you go back right and then you click on the drop down and then it's called label mm -hmm. earlier i explained layer name which is the elevation the second one was eddie it is this one the third one is the layer name those are these numbers so they are too small so you can come here and say okay appearance right and then i can make it 16 much more bigger and i apply they will change strategically so however if i make this one 30, 48 for instance now you see the computer is telling me to try and expand a bit so i can expand that's what the dot dot lines simply signify but however in this case i'm not going to do that so let me just take it back to a very very appropriate size label and then appearance Come here and then just choose 16, which is good. So what if I want to expand this? Let's say for instance now, I want to expand that symbol to make it more bigger, right? I could just come here and just go down. To do so, if you want to expand the figure, you come to this place. Not this. Probably this, you know. I mean, still the second one. So, spacing. Mm. I used to forget this sometimes. It's actually called patch. Patchy, 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 patchy. Another thing that you can do here is to show legend. You see, show legend. Click on it and it's become active. Show legend. So that's on that in here. Then you can just create a box. And this is the box here. You select this box and you can box it around. Right? Very good. So this makes up to your legend. Another thing that you have to take note of is the, you know the not arrow, so it's not something complicated for you. The most important thing again is the grids. So to, to do, you see the grid is somewhere here, but you have to make it active. So you click on this and click on grids. This is the most important one I always choose. So the, the black horizontal. Or you can choose this also. This is very good black vertical. So the, this one, you don't have to stress yourself. It will just make it appropriate. We select this now for instance now. You give it some time to load while it loads. So you see, it's load. It's try to make this side, side, and make this up, up. So you can see these are very, very small. That means you have to work on it. In some cases, if the intervals are not right, then you might have to, in one way or the other, change you know, to adjust it, to adjust it. So you can adjust it by just, you know, First of all, you can adjust it by coming here. Before you come here, you have to tell the computer that don't automatically adjust. So you, you, you pick this, right? And then you come here and tell it, oh, yeah, give me 15 interval, 15, and click on enter. So when you do that, you see it adjusts, isn't it? You can see if I choose 22, it's going to adjust, right? Absolutely. Clicking it once, just enhance it. So you see now, more and more good. Then look at all these grid lines. You don't want them, isn't it? So you can just go back, you know. I came here before, go back here. Then come down to this drop down and say, okay, fine. These are label. Don't forget. This line, they are called this line. Sorry, they are called grid line. So I can see grid lines. And I can say, okay, fine, no color. Which is, I don't want any color. So this place will go off. This line, the grid line will go off. You can see now. More fantastic. What's the next thing we need to do? The next one thing we need to do is the label, right? So I come back here again, right? I make click on this, isn't it? Still there, and I come down to this drop down. And I say, okay, labels. Because labels are not clear enough, apparent as usual. I can decide to bold it, then I can decide to come here and make it 12, and I can click on enter. And once I do that, then come down here. Now you can see a very, very fantastic design. So this is a very, very short way to design a map in a more appropriate way. You get, if you really want to add 
probably an inset also is super easy, not difficult. The best to do this also is just to come to map frame here, and then you select another file that you want to insert, in, in, insert for instance. So probably let's say for instance, now we want to look at the, the study area itself. So we can decide to just say, oh, well, cross river, come here. And I can just put this here as a new map. Yeah. So it's just going to come here. And then I can make it more big. I can extend it. I can extend it. However, what is inside it is a bit very large. This because I'm on this one alone, so I stay focused. I can just come to layout, click on activate, and zoom out very well. Drag, you know, something like that, and zoom out. So it's actually telling me where this space belongs. And however, I can tamper with it also here. Remember, I said to make it more bigger. Yeah, you, you have to reduce the value. So it's getting more bigger. So if I want to make it more smaller, I have to reduce the value. Let me put seven there. So you see, much more. Then I can just say eight so that I can be more. So, which is okay. So come back here. I can just drag it in somewhere very below here. So, so I can still activate again to drag what is inside it here to make it more appropriate. And then I can say, so this is it now for instance, man. So for you guys, this is a bit closer. I can drag this to make it somewhere left. I can just click on this. Right, and come down to activate so that I can, I can have more chance to drag this up. Then I can move it here. Once I do that, then I close this. Very, very simple. The most important thing I need to do is to highlight this part, right? That's showing us this is where we are. This is, I mean, the, the, an insert of this. So, appropriately, I can just come here and just click on the rectangle, click on this exactly. Then I can just come to this section here and just draw a line. This is a manual way, however. There's other way to do this. But this is super more easy. And you have more access. I mean, power overhead, actually. So I draw it like a, like a box. The next thing I'm going to do is to make it to be reddish, isn't it? Very red. So how do I do this? Then all I, all I need to do is just come here and then Come down to appearance. You see, I'm gonna outline is called is color black. I'll make it red because red seems more captivating and people can easily know what is going on. So you see red here, which is inset of this. Then it will be very good also if I have a very large rectangle that covers this place all over. So I can just come here and just say okay, good. So I make it like this. But do not forget, this map does not have a title. So I, I purposely didn't put it for one reason or the other because of the fact that this map is purposely being made for research purpose. So probably someone that is writing a paper, for instance, now writing the research work, you don't have to put that on your map because in the paper itself, there's a section below that you can just describe the figure that you are trying to represent. So that's why. So when you are done like this, you just come to share. You come down to share it, then you can click on layout. This place pop off. It tell you which file type, is it JPEG or PNG? You are free to choose. SVG is also available to, for website embellishment. However, select the folder that you want to keep it, you know, a, a very appropriate one. At the same time, you can select the DP high, you know, the display pixel, you know, value. The higher it is, the more high quality and more heavy it's going to be. Then you click on export to export the map. Once you export the map, it's saved on the repository that you want it to be. And then once you do that, then it's fine. Thank you so much.